Hi everyone, some gamer dude here. A few years back, I was really excited for Yu-Gi-Oh! Speed Duels, a new format of Yu-Gi-Oh! with the goal of bringing Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links, the mobile game, into real life. Duel Links itself was appealing because, at the time, it had reverted the game back to the original Duel Monsters era, revamped the gameplay by purposely curating the format, slimming the board down to 3x2, introducing skill cards, and introducing a new Hall of Fame inspired ban list. It breathed new life into old cards that hadn't seen play in donkey's years, and Speed Duels was looking to do the exact same for paper, bring back the Duel Monsters era and spruce it up. It started out well. The format was launched with two products called Speed Duels Starter Decks Destiny Masters and Speed Duels Starter Decks Duelist of Tomorrow. Both products contained three 20 card decks, three skill cards for each deck, and one ultra rare variant card for each deck. Each deck was packaged in their own little cardboard box inside the larger package, and the cards themselves had a glossy outer layer, feeling of much higher quality than regular Yu-Gi-Oh! The presentation was impeccable, and while the format wasn't perfect, it was dominated by Dragon Caller OTK, it was fun, and that should be corrected in future releases, right? Then everything took an immediate downward turn with Arena of Lost Souls, the first Speed Duels pack. The glossy outer layer is gone. They feel like regular Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Okay, we can live with that. Begs the question why the first products were so much nicer, but the set has a bigger issue. The set itself. Speed Duels is nearly completely made up of older cards. The only new cards are the skill cards, and later on cards that never hit the TCG back in the early days. Cards that were power crept past by the time the TCG had started. You are also locked into Speed Duels cards. You can use Speed Duels cards in the TCG, but you can't use TCG cards in Speed Duels. Arena of Lost Souls has 8 ultra rares, 2 are skill cards, so limit 1 per deck if you use them at all. One has only ever been printed as Ultra Rare before, Desert Twister, but is nearly worthless. Right now it can be had for 249 USD for the Ultimate Rare version. Then the remaining 5 Ultra Rares have either been printed at Rare or Common in the past. The most notable being Spear Karibo, which was printed at a Common in the past, absolutely worthless. Ultra Rare here, and the most expensive card in the format at the time, over 15 USD. This was purposely done because it was one of the strongest cards in Duel Links. They knew it was good. Boxes gave out 3 Ultra Rares and 6 Super Rares. So Sphere Karibo, a card that they knew was needed at 3 from Duel Links, was not only pricey for a niche format, but a pain to pull. Speed Duels was already having a hard time attracting people over because Konami's advertising was poor and it really only appealed to nostalgia baiting. But this was the blow that kept it from growing. It came out as this affordable, fun throwback to classic Yu-Gi-Oh! Those decks were extremely good value for what they were. Then the format became pay to win for cards that are otherwise worthless without that stamp, literally paying a greatly inflated price for a stamp. Second verse, same as the first. Attack from the Deep has 8 Ultra Rares, 2 are skills, all but one of the remaining Ultra Rare have been printed at common in the past, many of them being in tins or structured decks prior. And that final one, the Forceful Checkpoint, is a $1 secret rare. Delightful. Sets 3 and 4 largely continue this trend with the odd exception of Don Zalug, who is worth something. You're paying a premium for worthless cards because of a stamp. Speed Duels had fairly consistent releases. The original decks back in January of 2019, set 1 in March 19, set 2 at the end of May 19, set 3 and an additional starter deck based around Weevil Underwood and Rex Raptor in August 19, then set 4 in early December 19 fairly normal release pattern, a set every 3-4 to four months. Then, nothing till mid-May 2020, 
over five months later. May 2020 gave us two new starter decks, Match of the Millennium and Twisted Nightmares. The Yu-Gi-Oh deck in Match of the Millennium alone reprinted three cards that were ultra rares in Speed Duels prior, including Sphere Karibo, with a further three ultra rares being reprinted between the Pegasus deck and Twisted Nightmares Bakura deck. Then, nothing again till the end of 2020, another six to seven months. Speed Duels seemingly goes out with a bang though, the Battle City Box. A set of eight decks designed to be played out of the box. All eight decks take their themes from Battle City's more memorable moments. Dark Paladin, Magnet Warriors, Chimera, Jinzo, Masks, XYZ Dragon Cannon, Obelisk the Tormentor, and Ishizu's Fairies. It contains a set of usable god cards, 20 skills, a ton of extra cards, alternative foils of the cards in the deck, totaling some 228 cards. Reprints are very sparse, only 4 skill cards and 8 cards in the decks. To top it off, it came in a really nice storage box. It really seemed like this would be the end for Speed Duels, but Konami finally understood what the audience wanted. Something that you could just pick up and play. If you wanted consistency, buy multiple of the product. The type of people that liked Speed Duels weren't the type to fuss over packs and singles. They weren't interested in foils. They just wanted to get the cards and play the game. Speed Duels found its home at the kitchen table. I guess it's lamentable for Speed Duels not having that popularity among the devoted fandom, but at least it went out on a high and found its audience. Except, out of nowhere and over a year later, it's not the end of Speed Duels. The Battle City box is being repeated with Speed Duels GX Duel Academy box. Exact same setup, 200 core cards, secret rare variants, likely 20 skill cards, all in one nice storage box. Of course it has the hero archetype, but Ancient Gears and Destiny Heroes are expected from the solicitation and packaging. We can only speculate as to the five remaining decks. But GX was the era where archetypes started taking over, and there is a lot to cover. Cyber, Neos, Cyberdark, Roids, and Crystal Beasts, just to name a few. Clearly the Battle City box did well, and of course it did. It was a well-designed product with the intended audience in mind. If Speed Duels ends up just being an annual affair, set up like the Battle City box, I think that's a good place for Speed Duels. Truth be told, I'd like to see them revisit Duels Kingdom one last time, and reprint a lot from sets 1 through 4. In particular Mako, Bandit Keith, and things that should have never been ultra rare in the first place, like the Magician of Black Chaos. Allow those cards to reach the people that want them, in a way they wish to consume them. I guess Speed Duels does have a happy ending. Konami didn't give up on it, realised where they went wrong, and the game was made all the better for it. It's actually nice to talk about something in the realm of card games going right for a change. Let's hope it sticks and they never make booster packs for it ever again. Could go with some more decks though, just saying. This has been some Gamer Dude, and thanks for watching.